you ever have one of those days where you just need extra coffee and there's maybe just not enough coffee on the planet for you? That's me today. Anyway, hi everybody, how are you today? Today we are here with a new video for my creative year. And this month our um, topic is figures. Figures? Let's see. Yep, that's what I wrote down, figures. <laughs> so, hopefully that's the right one. Anyway, um, so I thought we would do something interesting. I think I've shown on my YouTube channel before, but it's been a long time ago. So I thought we would just give a refresher. So, when you want to use figures in your work, human figures, um, and you are in the early stages of your journey, your process, uh, like I myself was at one point, like we all were at one point, I wasn't confident to draw them, um, so I used masks. I also didn't have a budget, so I bought them masks. Uh, I'm sorry, I made the masks rather than buy them because I didn't have the budget to go out buying a whole bunch of stuff and still don't. Um, and I prefer making my own supplies. So there's a lot of really great store-bought uh, figure stencils and masks, faces, full figures out there. Some of them are in my own design line, but I'm going to show you today how to make your own. And I still have a library of homemade ones that I use. We're gonna move the journal out of the way. This is um, an easy way to do this. So you're gonna need a piece of carbon paper. Um, if you don't have that, you can um, use um, graphite from a pencil. You could use a charcoal, piece of charcoal. Um, you're going to need it to transfer the shape of your image to chipboard, which you're also going to need. And then you're going to need an image from a magazine. Now, I have a stack of magazines downstairs I need to harvest. Um, some of them, uh, a lot of them, I picked up at the airport during the move, uh, different airports and while we were house shopping, uh, this one included. Um, and it's just been sitting downstairs, and I was thinking I was going to actually have to go out and buy a fashion magazine. Um, which is what I usually use, and then I saw the cover of this one, I thought, nope, I think I need that one. I think that's what the one we need to do. So I don't know how it's going to turn out, and basically what we're going to do is make a silhouette, but we'll find out. So the first thing you need to do is either rip out the page, or in this case, because this is a really thick cover stock, um, I and I might want to save the image to use as inspiration uh, for positioning and lighting for a painting later on. I really do like the position of her on this cover. I'm going to actually make a copy of it on my printer and I'll be right back. So when the cover, this magazine's really big, so when I made the copy of the cover, I really just wanted to get her, so I made sure to position it on the printer, so I just got her. I'm going to set this aside because I do now, <laughs> now that I see her on the cover, and she may be the only good thing about the magazine, but it cost me nothing, and um, I'm going to go through it and make sure there's no words or other images that I want to save for later. So now I'm going to take my image of my figure, my piece of chipboard, which is from the back of a pad of paper, and my carbon paper. Carbon paper, carbon side down onto the chipboard, then your image on top of it. We're going to put a couple of little clips to hold it in place, maybe littler ones. Oh, that looks kind of big. Let's use a little one. Okay, and then you're going to need a sharp pencil, which I have around here somewhere. Holy moly. All right, hang on. I'm going to use my big pen. Oop. I'm going to just use my big pen. That'll work. Okay, so now I'm going to take my figure and I'm going to trace around her shape. 
I may highlight a few positions of things like her arm here. I'm going to pretend like she's just looking up and this thing is not behind her. She's not resting her head on it. So I'm not going to pull this in this way. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it out as if she were just looking up at the stars. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to just press kind of firmly. all around Now, I don't know yet which parts of the silhouette I want to save and which I don't, so I usually trace extra ones. And then I'm going to lift it up. And I think that works. So we're going to take the clips off. Set that aside. I'm going to make, make a few changes. See, let's see what it looks like. Let's cut it out. You can use scissors, an X-Acto knife, use what you have. So I always turn it over to the back and double check what it looks like. Um, let's see. Just wondering if I need all these fingers on here. Switch to a smaller pair of scissors.
So then I just continue refining my mask, my shape, until I get something that I really like. Which I like that, so we're gonna go with that. Clean up my mess and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have our mask made and I gotta say, I'm not sure now which side I want her on, this side or this side. I, I usually do two page spreads. I may put her here, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know now, I may put her here. Um, but I, we said today's uh, figures, right, this month? So, and if you'll notice, in the back of the image here, there's figures on the chalkboard in the back behind her, which I'm assuming has to do with some food because there's a drawing of sugar, there's some lemons, some strawberries. But anyway, so I'm gonna get out some of my, sorry, there's glare. Can you see that now? Um, so I'm gonna get out some rubber stamps. I actually have a background rubber stamp. I know I do because I just cleaned my rubber stamps out yesterday. Um, that is mathematical figures. So I'm gonna get that out. I wanna collage some of that onto the background before we put our figure down. So let me do that and I'll be back. I have plenty of other lights on so I've turned off the overhead light because the glare is driving me crazy. All right, so I've got a um, Ranger Archival ink pad, which is waterproof. I've got some Tim Holtz collage paper and I have this stamp, I've had it for a long time. I, I have no idea if it's still available, but it is by Hero Arts. It's a cling mounted rubber stamp. I've actually never stuck it to the cling. It still has the paper on it. Um, it is um, called Coordinates with the Oxford Collection. Oh, Formula Fun is what the name of it is. There is a barcode back here. If I can find a listing for it, I'll put it in the description below. But I've had this for a long time, and that's what it looks like when it's stamped. So I love this stamp, actually. So we're going to take a piece of this collage paper, which is just tissue paper. Let's be real. Use gift wrap tissue. That's what you have. I just happen to have this, so I'm going to use it. Um, hang on, let me turn the sound off on my computer. I'm getting notifications. Okay. So now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna put this this way just because it's very curly. I am going to stamp with this black ink. I'm not gonna worry about getting all of the stamp in or getting a perfect impression because this is gonna be collage um, paper and it's gonna be in the background. I love this print. So just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's collage paper, like I said, so it doesn't matter. My table is getting full fast. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take our mathematical formulas and collage them onto um, our page. And I do think we're gonna do both pages. I don't know exactly yet where the figure is gonna go, but anyway, I'm gonna um, tear off the straight edges of the tissue. Okay. And I'm gonna use some matte medium Fluid Matte Medium by Lucatex. Um, you can get this at Michael's. Use a coupon. Brand new bottle. So. Okay. All right. So we are going to put this on. I do want some of this to be behind the figure. So, and since I'm not sure exactly where that's going to go, I'm gonna to try to scatter this just like a little bit everywhere. The only problem with working on this side of the page is this is burlap and 
Burlap is challenging. This is the Dina Wakely journal, by the way, if somebody's wondering. And it's a challenging journal because it's got lots of different kinds of papers in it. But if you like that sort of thing, then you'll probably like this journal. And I like the way you um, just get a hint of the tissue paper with the mathematical formulas on there. I could have stamped this right on the paper side, but it, I could never get it on the burlap side, which is why we stamped it on tissue paper, in case somebody's wondering, because as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, they're gonna wonder why I didn't just stamp it directly on the journal. That would be why. Okay, are you ready? All right. So this is mostly dry. Um, so I'm going to take one of my big fluffy stencil brushes. Maybe one that's not too big. We're going to position our figure. I want her to be right there. And I'm going to take a variety of different colors of paint. Now these are Dina Wakely paints. I have Night, which is like a dark navy blue, like a Payne's Gray. I have Lapis, which is a blue blue and then I've got some turquoise so I'm literally just going to put it down on the page this one in the tube is really old so I kind of want to use it up so we're going to squeeze a whole bunch of that out and we're going to just dip our brush over here I'm going to firmly hold the figure with one hand while I go around it with the brush. The table's going to shake a little bit, sorry about that. I'm probably being a little too aggressive. Because, <laughs> you know, that's what I do. Okay. You really do want to do this when um, your collage papers are dry because if you don't, then they're going to get all messed up. Now we're going to dry this really quick and then we're going to get out some gel pens. Okay, I don't think the whole thing is dry, but hopefully it's dry enough so we can move on. All right, I am going to, um, first I want to make some marks in the dark background, I want it to be sort of like she's looking up at the night sky. So I have just a white paint pen. I don't have a lot of paint pens. I have a few of them, but um, I need a scrap piece of paper. Let's see. Uh, I've got some. A scrap of some toned tan here. There we go. Oh yeah, it's dry. You know, I just don't always have patience for these to work. That one's brand new. Let's see. One of these must be juicy, hopefully. Not, not any of them. These are all brand new. Let's see. How about this one? Come on. Yeah, there we go. Just different size dots. You, if you don't have to have a paint pen for this, I have it, so I'm going to try to use it. I'm, in fact, I'm trying to use them up. Um, just get some white paint and a small paintbrush, or a back end of a knitting needle, a uh, top end of a pencil. Any of those things will work. Make it work with what you have. I hate to say it because it's probably some kind of mixed media artist sin, but I'm not a huge fan of paint pens. That being said, I have owned quite a few over the years. I've either just tried it hard to use them up or given them away. Okay, I also have a white gel pen.
which isn't gonna to wanna to write on the burlap really well because it's burlap, but the places where I put the collage paper, it should write, um, the collage tissue, it should write pretty well. Okay, I also am gonna use the gel pen to go over the figure and just sort of do this with her. Refining the shapes Yeah. Oh, I like the way that looks. It didn't come out perfect, but it's not about that. If there's any parts of her that I think um, there's too much dark paint, you can just go in, kind of, just go in sketchily. You don't have to be perfect about it. It's not about perfection. Um, just go in sketchily with your white gel pen or white paint pen if you have one. And take some of the white, uh, the dark away. Now in those, some of those spots were because I messed her up completely and I didn't get any um, of the dark paint in. This is just a Bic, it's a regular Bic ballpoint pen, people. It's nothing special. So I'm going to just do that. Perfect. So when I was looking for quotes or figuring out what I was gonna write on here, I came across two that I really like. And as you can see, I haven't washed my hands yet. Um, there, that's where the magic truly lies and the earth has music for those who listen. So I think those work really well together. Um, this one is probably from a magazine. This one is from a calendar of quotes from 2015 that I've had in my stash for a while. And this first quote, the earth has music for those who listen is by George, S-A-T-A-Y-A-N-A. -A -A. I'm not gonna try and butcher his name, but I'm gonna collage those both right here. I'm gonna use again some matte medium. Oops, this one goes down here. And this one up here. Some of my paint's not completely dry, so it's smearing a little bit, but I'm okay with that because it, as long as it doesn't do it too much, it blends the white paper in a little bit with the background, which I would do anyway with a, a pen or something. So there we go. I like the way that turned out. Uh, and to be honest with you, I wasn't sure about this um, prompt or this page when I started. I, I wasn't exactly sure where I was gonna go with it, but I have to tell you, I like the way that turned out. So I hope it gave you some ideas of what you can do with the topic of figures. I would love to see this month where you all take that, the different directions that you take it in, and please share in the group uh, My Creative Year. If you don't know what that is, the link is in the description below. It's a free Facebook group um, all about creative inspiration, um, daily word challenges, and more. And um, the link is in the description below. There's a bunch of us that teach in the court in the in the group, and we share most of our videos here on Facebook, but not all of them. Um, so if you want to see what we're up to there, go and join the group. Use the link in the description below. And uh, that's it for right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.